My guests tonight may lead slightly less zany lives, but they are the real thing. They don't look like any of those people did particularly, but Steve O'Donnell is head writer for Late Night with David Letterman, and he's one of those uh, responsible for the Late Night with David Letterman book, which will uh, give you all the top ten lists you can handle in one season. And Conan O'Brien writes for Saturday Night Live, and we'll be seeing samples of both of their works uh, a bit later. Oh, there are your names on the screen, fellas, in case you, All right. in case you have any problem with that. Uh, oh, I, I, I failed to hold up the book. Yes, there he is, The Late Night with David Letterman, book of top ten lists, and it even comes complete with ten reasons you should have it. There, there now. Did that help? I hope it does. Oh, yeah, I'm it happy. All, it all helped. Uh, uh, let's see, let's make this a, an earnest seminar on the subject of comedy and see if we can put, put the viewers yeah, away. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, I think that aside from love, comedy is the deadliest subject you can be serious about, so we, we'll try not to be too much. But um, the difference between the two shows seems to strike me a bit. Uh, w one aspect of it that doesn't get dwelt on that much is the lifestyle of working on them is supposed to be very different. The image outside yeah. is that the Saturday Night Live people live a life of parties and boisterousness and paper oh, yes. hats and uh, <laughs> very late hours. We're famous for our paper drives, and, of course, and the, uh, uh -huh. the big community breakfasts we have. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, well, that sort of completes And that the Letterman people live a, a more bourgeois banker's sort of existence. Well, the, yeah, sort of have to. We're, may, we're maybe more like a newspaper where they're a, a slick, glossy magazine, or yeah. at least a weekly. Is that what it is? All right, they're, yeah. like, they're like the Sunday parade, and, uh, right. Right. and we're like the daily news. Yeah, I think that, that pretty well spells it out. Um, the hours are vastly different, right? You'd, you'd have to change your entire biology to move from one show to the other. Well, Probably. yeah, you could more or less say that I'll, I'll, I'll see com uh, Conan coming into the building while I'm, I'm leaving. Yeah. Has anyone pointed out that the two of you each come, that both of you comes, do you know what I mean, that in each case you come we, we from... We rode a car here together, if that's yeah, what you mean. Uh, we yeah. have that in common. C comes from Harvard. Um, yeah. Now, there's nothing yeah. to be ashamed of, and I don't want to rub it in and... No, that, no, uh, no, that, that, comes, was... that comes up a lot. It seems to come up more and more uh, since the early 1980s when you started seeing Harvard graduates, and especially uh, uh, men and women who are on the Harvard Lampoon, the yeah. humor magazine, an uh, organization on campus, uh, writing, uh, writing uh, TV and uh, for magazines and so on. Yeah. I, it, it seems to be a surprise to a lot of people, because I think still the classic popular notion of Harvard graduates isn't knee-slapping and funny, but rather kind of maybe dull and wan and pale and I annoying. And the idea snotty. of, Mom, I've decided to go to Harvard and, and uh, write gags for pantaloons and comics. And it's become like, it's, <laughs> yeah. Right, with your shoulders bare on stage. It's become, it really has become like more of a respectable occupation, I think. I think if you had yeah. said in the 60s, if you had come out of Harvard in 1965 and said, I'm going to write for TV, that uh, you'd be seen as some sort of failure. Mm -hmm. But now it's definitely, you get more people. I think now you're seeing people at Harvard who are thinking, you know, uh, you know uh, maybe TV is a good career for me. They probably you couldn't have found anybody who was thinking that years, not that many years ago at Harvard, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. But we don't open the catalog and see um, a survey course of comedy from Aristophanes to Roseanne. Uh, I don't know. I I'm, I wouldn't put it past. Yeah, you know, it seems right about now. now. I, I, I think when I was in, in at school in the mid '70s, I don't think it was a, a viable career option quite than yet. But I think now people, I talk with undergraduates and they say, well, I'm, I'm writing some scripts, I'm going to send them out right. to, you know, Viacom or, <laughs> or, or, or Fox or something yeah. like that. And it seems like they, they accept as a matter of course that this is a profession like dentistry or lawyering right. or and by the State time, Department or something. By the time I graduated Harvard, which was 1985, I got a call. I got two agents calling me, you know, while I was writing my thesis, you know, which you mean they're scouting Harvard now? The way I think they, they are. Their... I mean, I think there's a little bit of that now because mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, which is, you know, maybe, uh, maybe somehow perverted. But uh, yeah, I got calls from people. They were unsolicited. They were just like they had heard the, you know, let's call the Lampoon Castle, give it a shot, see invest ten minutes in a phone call, and see what idiot answers. You know, one of the guys might pan out. Right. Or so. Let, what, let me look at an example of each of your work. I'm having trouble with my pronouns here. I, here, uh, let's start with a uh, clip from SNL, Saturday Night Live. 
That's uh, this is a thrill to see your work come alive. Uh, that cracks me up every time I see it. <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> Want to run it back and get, please? Get a, get could we? Little... <laughs> I've got time. Okay. Uh, the, the genesis of that was that a, was that ordered. Uh, that was just well. That was uh, I went to. Uh, I think I, I, I was out on the street with another writer on the show, Robert Smigel, yeah. and um, it was just something a girl went by, and uh, I, I think it started when I started. I was acting like an idiot, and I just watched a girl go by, and I said, you know, hello and goodbye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's not interested in me at all, and uh, he started doing it, and we both had fun doing it. So uh, we thought we'll give it a try, and then Tom Hanks, you know was great doing it. A lot of it's just matching it to the host. Yeah. If a host yeah. can do it, you know. If hey, are, are there hosts who come in with a, a list of things that, please don't ask me to do this or that, or? Yeah, there, there are. I mean, if a host has just been Conversely, do they want to be asked to do crazy stuff that you'd rather they didn't? And it's, it's funny. Sometimes you get a host who is on the show only because they've been involved in some huge scandal. You well, know? Yeah. They've just committed a murder or something, and that's the reason they're on the show. Mm -hmm. And they come in the first day there, they say, look, nothing about that. You know, and that's always, you know, someone who would never, uh, never be on right. anyway. But in general, they're, I'm surprised by how good a sense of humor most hosts have about, yeah. you know. Can you think of anybody who refused to do something just because that didn't fit his image or hers? Yeah, well, I, I remember uh, I worked on a sketch, this, you know, I worked on a sketch and... Uh, with with George Steinbrenner, and I think there was one thing in it where he had to do something really silly that he, you know, like dance or something, and he was like, I don't really want, to, you know, I don't want to be seen dancing, and you know, you can understand so we, that some people have. We were deprived of the Steinbrenner terpsichore. Eh? Yeah, and yet we got to see uh, the president's son, Ron Reagan uh, uh, Jr., dancing around in his BVDs. Yeah, we everyone they were has his a, BVDs, right? Well, they I mean, probably were from wardrobe. Could, could have been. Yeah. They were BVDs. They were so yeah. we crisp. checked yeah. on that. <laughs> That's right. That goes back some years. Yeah. yeah. Was, uh, Steinbrenner wouldn't do that. No, I, I mean, that, that's, uh, I think he just made it clear, you know, he was uncomfortable. And, uh, you know, he was a good sport about a lot of things on that show, actually. I think he, was wearing, he wore a bra, actually, a, a, a stuffed bra. Uh, <laughs> that's a and, sign of flexibility. Yeah, so it's strange. <laughs> you do get hosts that say things like, you know, I'm not going to, uh, you know, please don't make me wear a bathing suit. Right. But then they're really happy to be greased up and... You know, you, yeah. shot through a can. You're not revealing some secret about Steinbrenner that you caught. This is part of the show that you're discussing. He wanted to be greased up. That's, I'm just really, <laughs> for the cast I, part. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I read something to that effect, but I guess I, guess I, I wasn't ready for it. Uh, we can take another example now. This time, a bit of comedy from the David Letterman show. <laughs> 